By the end of this video, you'll be able to explain how a stack frame is used with subroutine calls in order to store return addresses, parameters, and local variables. So in order to explore this concept, we're going to use the program that you see here on the screen written in pseudocode. The first thing to note about this program is we've got various features. We've got subroutines being used, uh, we have parameters and we have local variables. So programs in memory. Commands in a program will usually reside in sequential memory locations. So on the left, we see the pseudocode program, and on the right, we see a segment of memory. You can see how each line of the program code, starting in memory location 0093, is stored sequentially. So where did this program actually start executing? Well, if we look at the pseudocode, we can see the first two blocks of code, lines 1 to 3 and 4 to 10, are two subroutines. The program actually starts executing at line 11. So that's memory location 0103. The program then instantly jumps to line 4 in our pseudocode because we have a call to a subroutine input underscore data. This, therefore, fires us off to memory location 0096, where this subroutine line of code is found. The program then proceeds in sequence, going through the memory location sequentially, 0097, 98, 99, down to 0100. So we can see we're executing pseudocode lines 5, 6, 7 and 8. When we hit line 8, we hit another call to a subroutine, this time calculate underscore tax. So this fires our program up to memory location 0093, which holds the first line or the heading for the subroutine calculate underscore tax, line 1 in our pseudocode. The program then continues to execute through the memory locations in sequence until we hit memory location 0095 or line 3 of our pseudocode and this ends the subroutine. Now we know we need to return to line 9 or memory location 0101. This is because this is the line after the one we were executing when we jumped up to calculate underscore tax. But how does our computer know to do this? The next memory location, if we were following in sequence, would take us to line 4 of our pseudocode. Well, it all works using a call stack data structure consisting of stack frames to remember the return address every time a subroutine is called. Now, a stack is an example of a last in, first out LIFO data structure. Each stack frame corresponds to all the information you need to know about a single call to a subroutine which has not yet been terminated. And as well as holding this return address that we've mentioned, it also contains any parameters or local variables for the subroutine. To really put this into context and to show you where some mistakes can often be made in exams or programs, we're going to work through this code now and show you what happens. So the program starts at line 11 and instantly we have a call to the subroutine input underscore data. So at this point, the input underscore data stack frame is pushed onto the stack. You can see there we have a section for parameters, return addresses and local variables. And the first thing we do is say where we're going to be returning to. So when we're done with input underscore data, we're going to return to line 12. So now we can continue. We execute line 4 and then line 5. Now here we declare a local variable called total and we set it to 0. We can see here in the input underscore data stack frame, we have a space for local variables, and so we've set total to zero. We then ask the user for some input, and we ask them for some pay information. And they've typed in 500 here. So you can see the local variable pay has been set to 500 inside the input underscore data stack frame. 
we do the same thing for overtime and get 150. We then hit another call to a subroutine, this time calculate underscore tax, and we're going to pass in the values of pay and overtime. So look what's happened here. We've pushed onto the top of the stack a new stack frame for calculate underscore tax. Now, the first thing to note is we obviously have to put in a return address. When we're finished executing calculate underscore tax, we're going to return to line nine. So you can see we've done that there. But we're also passing in two parameters to this subroutine. We're passing in the contents of pay and overtime from the input underscore data stack frame. These get passed into the parameters pay and overtime of the calculate underscore tax stack frame. You can see here that this is a copy. So although we have variables that have the same name in the program, our code can cope with this because in essence, it's seeing them as totally separate. Pay and overtime in input underscore data stack frame are totally different to pay and overtime in the calculate underscore tax stack frame. So we've passed in 500 and 150 and we've stored them in the parameters of the top stack frame. Now we can proceed with the subroutine calculate underscore tax. So here it sets a local variable called total. And again, notice we already have a variable called total. It exists inside the input underscore data stack frame, but this is a totally separate local variable. It performs a calculation and the result of that is 780. Now at this point, we hit the end of the subroutine calculate underscore tax, and we know we need to return to line nine to carry on executing our program. When you hit the end of a subroutine, a couple of things happen. Firstly, we look at the return address field of calculate underscore tax stack frame, and it tells us to go to line nine or memory address nine. The second thing is the entire stack frame at the top of the stack gets popped off. Now this is important because it means all the contents held inside the parameters and local variable section of this stack frame are now lost. We then hit line nine that says output total. Well, we're outputting the total value that exists inside the stack frame that's currently on the top of the stack, which is input underscore data, and that is still zero. So this program actually has an error in it. It's syntactically correct, but logically we've got a problem. We hit end subroutine, and again, that means we're going to pop the stack frame that's on the top of the stack, which is input underscore data, and use the return address field of 12 to know where to go to next. We now have an empty call stack, and we've reached the last line of our program that outputs end of program.